I graduated here in 2007. This is a sixth grade class, so it was 2005 when I was seated in those seats. I had Mr. Clark, Ms. Lane, any of you guys have them? In seventh and eighth grade. Seventh and eighth grade, okay. I had Miss Jones, do you guys have Miss Jones at all? That's Miss White. Seventh grade, okay, so you guys don't have her yet. Great, okay, I'm gonna ask a question, who plans on reading this summer? Great, what books, what books are you thinking? Tell you what to get. Okay. The Deep Blue, what else? Shout it out, just tell me. Everything. Everything. Okay, <laughs> great. You guys have a plan to read. Why is that so important? Yeah. So, like, if you pull out a book and they give you something that you don't know how to read, you ask somebody else to read it, that's going to look bad. Yeah, so applying for a job. A lot of you guys are going to be doing, having jobs this summer. Great. What we're going to talk about specifically is the skill of close reading. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. It's reading closely. But how are we going to do that? The skill of close reading involves predicting. I'm sure you guys make predictions all the time. Weather predictions, predicting how you're going to feel the next day, predicting how much homework you're going to do. We're going to do predictions based on a single sentence. Great? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to deal with some sensitive content, too. We're going to talk about the institution of slavery in our country's history. I know you guys are great readers. I know you guys are mature. So we're gonna handle this content like, like smart learners. Okay, can uh, D'Angelo, can you read the first sentence there? guys do when you don't really know what a word means? Sound it out. And then? Context. Context. Good. And then? There you go. You guys are set. What does unconsciously mean? You don't know what's happening, but it's happening. You're not aware, right? You don't know what's happening, but it's happening. So who are we talking about in this sentence? Harriet Ross. Good. How do you know that? It's explicitly written in there, too, and it's the subject of the sentence. You guys learn subject and predicate. What are we saying about Harriet Ross? Feel free to use your own words. Yeah. Um, how she absorbed many kinds of knowledge when she was six years old. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, this is a hard part. This is where we're doing the prediction. What do you predict the next line will be about? It's, it's tough. You're anticipating what the writer is thinking. Yeah? Um, what kind of knowledge she's going to Yes, that is great. Exactly. So let's find that out. Thought two. Thought, sentence, I use them interchangeably. Uh, can somebody read this? Yeah. She could not, for <coughs> have said how or at what moment she knew that she was a slave. Good. Who are we talking about? Harriet Harry Ross. What are we telling? What are we saying about Harriet Ross? She was a slave. So, according to the, the question or the prediction made in the back, what kind of knowledge are we dealing with here? Oh, keep going. Keep trying. Yeah. Knowing that she's a slave. Yeah. Then what? The knowledge of being a slave. So you see how it gets very serious, right? Yeah. So what is that like? If I am a human being held in slavery, what am I thinking? What are my responsibilities, right? You see how you're entering the mind of the writer, and now you're curious, you're anticipating? That's what act, close active reading should be like. So when you guys are uh, reading the books that you've picked out this summer, this is a good way to measure whether you're actively reading. So the next remaining thoughts. This is a lot of writing, but what we're going to do <coughs> is I want to divide uh, the class according to each 
of these thoughts. Oh. So this table is going to do the she knew about her brother's thought. This table is going to do the she had been taught to say thought. This group is going to do the at the same time someone had taught her thought. And then this group is going to do the largest chunk. What I want you to do is talk about the details that the writer <coughs> is sharing about her experience of the knowledge of what it's like to be a person held in slavery. What is it like? What are details that you can take out and so that we can kind of draw a portrait of what her life is like? Then I want you to pick among each other one representative to share your thoughts. Feel free to write those thoughts down, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Great? So you guys know which thought you're doing? All right. And I'll be walking around. So Jay and Leandre and Treviante, you know what you need to do. As far as get your group, get in your group. Well, June, you probably want to move in some. Some of you might want to move your tent. Okay, you need to be interacting and talking. Some of you might want to move your chairs in the front, too. I'll just get in with the group right there. Well, you don't need a chair, honey. Just use that chair over there. But don't leave that in blocking the door.
Excuse me. She's pushed her picture. No, but can you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So think about what that means as a symbol and then also as a function. Okay? Good. Good. He's going to be a good teacher. So, Brianna, go to her. I was going to go to her. I was going to go to her. I You're at this table, Jada. Your friends will fill you in. Are you guys feel almost ready? No, no, the first Report back. Does everybody have their representative? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call on that representative for the group, and they're just going to stand up and share what has been written or what has been discussed in the group. All right, so we're going to start with uh, D'Angelo, representative. All right, D'Angelo, what do you guys have? Me and my group decided that when she found out that she was a slave, she found out everybody else around her was slaves. That's good. Yeah. Right. All right, group two. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I want you to notice how in this thought we see your relationship with a person determines how you address them. There's a, there's a specific way of speaking to someone depending on your relationship with them. So she tells you what that relationship is like uh, as a person held in slavery and the person who is in control of her. All right, group three. Uh, thought group. Um, we all decided that um, this um, slave named Harriet Walsh, she's trying to escape by losing to um, Mrs. Buckle, Mrs. We had most of as a guy, and then we all have predicted that when she, no, we all predicted that the next morning she gonna, um, she's going to um, tell her family to yeah. escape her. Exactly. So I'm glad you, you used prediction when you look at this sentence, because if you look at the next sentence, it is about escape. That's a, that's a scene of escape from uh, men on horses chasing her. So, but sometimes your prediction is wrong, and that's okay, because you know what's wrong. You're anticipating what you're about to read. If you can do that, you are reading actively. You are taking in what the author is writing. All right, last group, last thought. Oh, um, our group thought that Harriet was probably feeling scared because she's in a new country and she's like blinded by all the new things that she sees. Um, she also looks worried and confused because they're like giving her tools and she doesn't know how to use them. And she knows that if she doesn't do it the right way, then there will be a consequence from the men on the horses. It's interesting because you can see how here we're talking about how it's not just her, it's her whole family. Here we're talking about a specific way of address. Here we're talking about a symbol. Right? The North Star, it functioned as a guide and it was also a symbol. It was constant, unlike the other stars. And then here we get into the psychology. You said worried and concerned. You probably get that word from fear. So it's like you see all the details that she's giving us of this knowledge of what it's like for a human to be held in slavery. And you get a lot, a lot more than if you quickly go through it and don't trying to anticipate what's going to be said. Last point I want to make that group three made, Malachi said they were predicting what would happen next. And they based that off of the North Star, which was a guide, right? He predicted there would be an escape. Guess what the next thought or sentence was about? Exactly, exactly. 
This is an exercise that I want uh, you to take with you this summer as you're reading the books that uh, interest you. I have a, a bonus exercise. It's challenging, it's hard, but from the skills that you guys have just demonstrated to me, I, I'm pretty confident that you can do this. What it is, I'm gonna give you a paragraph, but it's out of order. Mm. Your job is to put it back in order. Now there is a right answer, but what I want you to think about is why is this sentence before that one and that one before that one, right? For example, I'm going to give you two sentences. I was hungry, I ate dinner. Which one would you logically would come first? Exactly. So take that principle of putting it in the right logical order and do it with these, with, with these sentences, okay? And then tomorrow or um, another day, we can revisit uh, the order and why you put it in that specific order, great? Now, just to conclude, these are books that I had read in high school. They were, they were deep, they were challenging, and I think you would, you would take a lot from them the first is called What is the What? It's by Dave Eggers. It's about uh, the boys, the lost boys of Sudan. Boys that escaped the country, racked by violence, and they share their journey, their story, their struggles, their obst the obstacles they face. The Bluest Eye is by Tor Toni Morrison, very famous author. You're probably going to come across her in high school. About a young African-American girl growing up and the kinds of family issues she deals with and societal issues. And then the last is A Farewell to Arms, Ernest Hemingway, about an ambulance driver in World War I or II, he falls in love, a romance. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an array of different stories. Consider reading them. I enjoyed them. Guys, thank you so much for your time. With the assignments, I, I want you to do it with another partner. You guys seem to work really well uh, with another person. And then that's how you learn with, with other people. Great? Okay, I'm going to hand these out. Thank you guys so much.